I want to preach a, a two-part series today. It may be a little bit more teaching than it is preaching. We'll probably get to some preaching, I guess, if that's what God allows. But uh, I, I got a, a word in my spirit that, listen, Elkhorn, you've got to get this word. We've got to get back to this word I'm getting ready to give you. Um, how many of you know God always starts with me? He normally takes me behind the Holy God woodshed first. And, uh, and, uh, he, and then he gives me a word, and I want to give it to you. But this word that God has given me, I titled it, A Fight Worth Fighting. A Fight Worth Fighting. Everybody say, A Fight Worth Fighting. Now, how many of you know there's some fights, there's some things in life not worth fighting for? I think Christians waste more oil, more time on things that are not eternal. We fuss, we fight, we bicker, we complain about things that really, watch this, look at me, it does not matter. Does not matter. But how many of you know there are some things in life worth fighting for? I thank God we got a president that's got some unction about him that does not listen to man, does not listen to the media, does not listen to the world, He's got enough unction about him that he realizes there is something special about Israel. And he said, I made a promise. It's already been established. I'm just agreeing with it. Listen to me, Elkhorn. One thing worth fighting for that I think we need to pay more attention to is Israel. It's Israel. We take it too lightly. And the day that America turns her back on Israel, America will be off the map. You can bank on it. You can bank on it. There are some things in life worth fighting for. And I'm going to show you today out of this message, this one thing that God told me, there's, there's three things, but I'm going to give you one today because I'm trying to learn to be a good pastor that does good with time. <laughs> so I want to be more effective than try to bombard you with three points that you only remember one anyway. <laughs> so I want to give you one thing that God laid on my heart. This is worth fighting for. Everybody say, this is worth fighting for. Yes, yeah, so if you have your Bible, John chapter 12, I'm excited. Holy Ghost, help me preach. I love you guys. I am blessed and thankful to be your pastor. John chapter 12, starting in verse 1. I got a little reading to do, but I'm going to set a foundation so God can come riding in on his presence. The word of God will do the, the will of God. John chapter 12, verse 1. Here we go. Y'all ready? Say amen. It says, six days before the Passover... Jesus came to Bethany where Lazarus lived. Y'all remember in John chapter 11, he raised Lazarus from what? The dead. Now he's living. Now listen, this is powerful. You got to get this stuff. This is where Lazarus lived in Bethany, whom Jesus raised from the dead. Here a dinner was given in Jesus' what? Honor. I told you guys about honor. Honor, 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 honor. Martha served while Lazarus was among those reclining at the table with them. Then Mary took about a pint of pure nard, and really what it was was expensive perfume. It was burial perfume. Listen to what she did. She poured it. I wonder what would happen if somebody brought perfume in here, broke it, and started anointing people's head with it. I'm just saying, this is the Bible, right? We're going to get somewhere today. I'm going somewhere. So she took the expensive perfume... She poured it on Jesus' feet and wiped his feet with her hair. Mm -mm -mm. And the house, watch what happened when the, when the fragrance got broke. And the house was filled. It was filled with the what? Fragrance of her perfume. But one of the disciples, how many of you know is always a but? But one of the disciples, a follower of Jesus, Judas, who was, a, who was later to betray him, he, what did he do? Object. How many of y'all know is always going to be objectors? Why wasn't this perfume sold and the money given to the poor? It was worth a year's worth of wages. Now watch this. I love because Jesus, he will, he, will, he will expose your heart. He did not say this. Now listen to this. He didn't say this. Watch this. He didn't say this because he cared about the poor, but because he was a thief. 
as keeper of the money bag. He was a treasurer of the church. Uh Uh-oh. He used to help himself to what was put in it. My, 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 my. And I love what Jesus says in verse 7. He says, leave her alone. Everybody say, leave her alone. Everybody say, let her worship. Come on, say, let her worship. Everybody say, leave her alone. Yeah, Jesus said, leave that woman alone. You leave her alone. I love this. I love this so much. It was intended that she should save this perfume for the day of my burial. He says in verse 8, you always have the poor among you, but you will not always have me. Meanwhile, listen to this, on the outside, a large crowd of Jews found out that, that Jesus was there and came not only because of him, this is what they wanted to do, but also to see Lazarus, whom he had raised from the dead. So the chief priests, watch what happened right here, made plans. This is church. Listen, listen to me. I'm going somewhere. They started making plans to kill Lazarus, who God just raised up from the dead. The church started making plans on how to kill him. Mm -mm 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 -mm. How to kill Lazarus as well. For on an account, here's why they wanted to kill him. Y'all ready? Watch. For on account of him, this is Drew, this is why they wanted to kill him. Many of the Jews were going over to Jesus and believing in him. Holy Spirit, help me preach. I want y'all to go back really quick. Everybody rewind really quick. Go back to verse 10 really quick. The Bible says, I want you to look, I want you to underline this in your Bible. I want you to highlight it, whatever you got to do. It says, make plans. Make plans. Listen to me very, very, very careful. Anytime you have a church or a Christian following Jesus Christ, doing his will, growing in the Lord, souls being saved, life's being changed, baptistry staying filled up. Y'all watch me very carefully. At that time, you get on Satan's radar. At that moment, no wonder Satan hates Elkhorn Baptist Church. Souls are being saved for God's sake. Lives are being changed for God's sake. We are on Satan's radar. Do y'all understand what this preacher's saying? Well, I don't know why, God, why, why Satan's after me. I do. You're a soul winner. You are a soul winner. And most churches, hallelujah, don't want to pay the price of being a soul winning, life changing church. They don't want to pay the price. They'd rather have 50 and no more, Bueller her four and no more, and two baptisms a year, and they're good because why? Nothing happens. Mm, God gave me this word. Notice, there is a good chance right now. While I am preaching, somebody in here right now, Satan, is making plans to take you out. Take you out. Satan comes to steal, kill, and destroy. We know John 10, 10. Listen to me very carefully. Right now, Satan is making plans, not just ISIS, Satan is and his demons and his angels to try to take you out. It reminds you, Satan hates a church that wins souls. Right now, Satan hates my guts. Right now, he's making a plan. How can I take Drew Hayes out? How can I take the praise team out? How can I take, how can I stop, how can, can Elkhorn, how can I get them off the map? Satan is after us. Y'all know what gets Satan's attention? It's not big gatherings like we in Kentucky think. 
You know what gets Satan's attention? When a lost person who is lost and undone and does not know Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior and they walk this aisle, they walk that aisle, they walk the aisles, and they come down to an altar that the river is flowing right to the left and left to the right, up and down, and when they get into the river, that's when God overtakes them, God consumes them, and that's when Jesus becomes a master of their life, and that's when Satan says, I no longer own them. I've got to stop them now. Either you're working for Satan or you're working for God. Either you're working for Satan or you're working for God. Church, y'all listen to me. Either you and me. Either you're working for Satan or you're working for God. Oh, that's good Kentucky preaching. How can I take Eddie Finn out? Well, I guess I'll just give him a little sickness. I guess I'll give him a bad attitude. I guess I'll make this side not like this side and, and, and the pastor get mad at the people and the people get mad at the pastor. Shh. That's what he does. And, and here's my biggest concern. Churches are falling into his traps. They're falling into his traps. Listen, we are better together than we are apart. We are a force to be reckoned with. If, listen, if us just here in the first service right now, if we get serious about God and come together and unify where you and I tie, when we tie together, we are a force to be reckoned with. <laughs> Satan cannot stop God's church. Oh, I'm preaching good. Thank you, Lord. Let me ask y'all a question. I thought long and hard about what I'm getting ready to ask you, Aaron. I want you to put this on the big screen. If winning the world to Jesus was your job, would you still be employed? Come on. If, G, if, if winning this world, if that is our job, if winning this world, the world to Jesus was your job, would you still be employed today? What if God were to do an annual or a biannual, or a quarterly assessment on the church, on soul winning, on being the salt and the light of the world. What if God said every quarter, every three months, I'm coming down and I'm going to do an assessment on your, on your life, your faith, your attitude, your joy, your peace, your happiness, your self-control. What if God said every quarter, I'm going to do an assessment on everybody in here right now. What if you were to say these words, and only you can answer this, how are you doing about sharing your faith? How many souls have you won this month, the last three months? Are you being the light and the salt of the world? Do you have a Lazarus testimony that the, that the devil hates you so much because you're winning souls and the Jews and the Gentiles are coming over to God? Do they hate you that much? How would your assessment be? Would you still be employed today? Yeah, Corn, I want you to listen to this pastor. I really believe this is a word that God really, 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 really downloaded in my spirit. I promise you, when we all stand before God, and I want you to listen to me, I know we live in America, I know it's the land of the free. I know nobody has to force you to worship God. You got a choice, you got a decision. But one day, one day, you will bow down. One day, whether you like it or not, you will stand before God and you will give an account on your life, your attitude, what you've done for God, how many souls you brought to heaven with you. Listen to me very carefully. There's always, there's always going to be somebody trying to stop it. When we stand before God, God is not going to ask how big Elkhorn Baptist Church was. Watch this. That only impresses you. Numbers only impress men. God's not going to ask how much money Elkhorn Baptist Church had in her account. Watch this. God ain't going to ask you how much money you had in your account. God's going to ask. Y'all ready? How many did you bring with you? 
how many did you bring with you? Is there going to be a line of people? Can you all imagine Dr. Billy Graham? I think about him all the time. What a warrior. I believe of all the pastors in this whole wide world, Dr. Billy Graham is a legend. I can't imagine. Because listen, the Bible calls them soul winner's crown. When we get to heaven, if you've ever won a soul, if you've ever won a soul for Jesus Christ, you get a crown to lay back at his feet. Can y'all imagine Dr. Billy Graham when he's standing there, he says, Billy, Doc, here's the deal. I, here, I want all these souls for you. He's not going to have one. He's going to have a wheelbarrow. He's going to have a wheelbarrow. God's going to ask, did you do, watch, your job? Well, God, I'm introverted. Well, we're going to see how that stands on Judgment Day. Well, God, we got a preacher. We're going to see how that stands on Judgment Day. God, you didn't call me to be an evangelist. We're going to see how that stands on Judgment Day. Are y'all with me? Say amen. Are y'all getting the word? Say amen. Listen to me. I want, I want to show you. I want you to notice something in Scripture, in Scripture, in Bible. There will always be two attacks. Everybody say two attacks. Come on, say, come on, y'all help me. Two attacks. I know it's early. I know you got sleep boogers in your eyes. Wipe them out. Let's tell me. There's going to be two attacks. Everybody say two attacks. Come on, this side say two attacks. There's always going to be two attacks on a Christian who's a soul winner and a life changer and a church who is winning souls for Jesus Christ. Watch this, Elkhorn. These two attacks are on us right now. Here we go, number one. There will, there will always be an attack inside the church. Judas. Let me remind y'all, he was a disciple. Let me remind y'all, he kept the money. He was the treasurer of the church, for God's sake. He counted the money. Oh, let me tell you about Judas. He saw every sign, every miracle, every wonder. He was in the boat when Peter walked on water. He was there. He was a good church member. There were always, listen to me, Drew, Eddie, y'all young pastors. Eddie, you're older than me, so I can, I can tell you this. I've been preaching longer than you. Listen to me, deacons, y'all listen to me. Praise team, y'all listen to me. I'm going so, oh, this is so good. Y'all listen to me. There will always be an attack inside the church. There will always be a spirit of Judas inside the church. I've never met a church that did not have a Judas in it. Brian, I don't like this sermon. You should. It will always be an attack. Church against church. Church member against church member. There will always be a Judas. Look how they're worshiping. Always. Always. Number two, y'all ready? Drew, there will always be an attack outside the church. Y'all remember the, the religious leaders. <laughs> they started plotting. How can we kill? How can we stop Lazarus? Y'all listen, listen to me. They were there when Jesus raised him up out of the dead. They were there when Lazarus walked out of the tomb. But they say, watch this to me. Hallelujah, Holy Ghost. Thank you, God. Anything that God is in, Satan hates. Satan hates a live church. Satan can't stand when Elkhorn comes together and gets on her feet and gives God some praise, honor, and glory. Satan hates that. And if Satan can't do it within, he'll do it without. If he can't kill the messenger, if he can't kill the deacons, if he can't kill the leadership, if he can't kill the choir, if he can't kill you, watch this inside, he'll go outside. Watch this very carefully. Y'all with me? Say amen. Come on. Come on, y'all hang with me. This, this is the word. This is the word from God. You got to listen to this. Satan is no respecter of persons either. Satan will use a church member to try to stop you. Y'all are looking at me all glorified and sanctified. And I've walked in churches before where they were angry.
See, here's how, here's how weak Christians are. Y'all ready? Here's, people say today, they'll say, God, what's bothering Brian? I'll be given a word from God that everybody can relate to, and all of a sudden they'll say, poor pastor. Hey, your pastor is good. Your pastor, hallelujah, is in love with Jesus Christ. Your pastor believes in signs, wonders, and miracles. Your pastor believes in the Bible, not just in Genesis, but all the way to Revelation. Your pastor still believes in the tongues and the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Your pastor believes. I still believe in Jesus' name. I believe that. Your pastor's fine. Woo! If Satan can't kill you from the inside, he'll get you from the outside. Or let me, I ain't even, listen, I can't even, shoot. Remember, Satan's goal is to take you out. Take you out. He'll use animals, take you out. He'll use church, take you out. He'll use the outside community where the Pharisees are at, and they're talking, look what's going on, who they think they are. Look, at, y'all know I'm preaching good up in here today. He'll use, if he can't use the inside, He'll go to the outside. Now watch, y'all want to see a good business meeting? Here's the best business meeting of all. Y'all ready? How many of y'all can testify what I just preached? Come on, I want you to raise your hand if you can testify. You have seen the enemy use the inside. Come on, I want y'all to raise your hands. Raise your hands if you have seen the enemy use the inside. Christians to try to kill what God is doing. And then you've seen him lose the outside. The Pharisees and look in judgmentalism. Every hand is raised. Every hand is raised. So you know what that tells me? This is a rhema word. Everybody can relate. So you say, Brian, I'm glad y'all asked this. <laughs> Here's what God told me. I love this, Beth. Y- you're going to get this because you all praise him. going to get this. Here's what God said. He gave me three things. I'm going to take this Sunday and next Sunday to explain. Listen to me. How do we stop this stuff? How do we stop the enemy? Listen, how many of y'all have ever quoted scripture and then felt, still felt sick? Gosh. That's all right. Let me get to preaching. God spoke this into me, and I want to give it to you. Here's what we need to do. Number one, y'all ready? First thing. First thing. First thing. You've got to fight for the fragrance. Woo! Woo! Hey! Hey! You've got to fight for the fragrance. We need to fight for the fragrance. This is one thing that's worth fighting for, and I'm going to fight for it. The Bible says as Mary was weeping, y'all listen to this, this is the Bible. Bible. Everybody say this is the Bible. Yeah, the Bible says as Mary was weeping and worshiping and wiping Jesus' feet with her hair, Judas started attacking and criticizing and talking and blaming and looking and attacking her worship. Yeah, he sure was. The Bible says, I love this. Listen, here's what was going on that they didn't recognize. The fragrance filled the air. The room was filled. Hallelujah. The room was filled with the fragrance, but they were still complaining. Watch. I want to remind you, there will be times... In your life, in your ministry, in your walk with God, there will be times when you have to fight for the fragrance. You have to fight your way to this altar. You have to fight your flesh. You have to fight to get into the river. You have to fight the crowd to get to Jesus. You have to fight to touch the hem of his garment. You have to fight to get into the Holy of Holies. You've got to fight for the fragrance. you got to fight to worship. Have y'all not noticed that? Come on. Listen, praise him. Listen, don't, don't get discouraged. This is, a, this is good. We're, now we're learning. We're recognizing that the enemy is trying to kill us from the inside. And if they can't kill us from the inside, he'll go to the outside. But he's going to start on the inside. Don't, praise him. Don't y'all get discouraged. There's a fight. There's a fight going on right now. There's a fight. 
But then there was a fight on that keyboard. Brother Howard, there's a fight in leadership. It is going to be a fight when you walk with God. We got to learn how to fight and recognize who the enemy is. Flesh and blood, if they bleed, they're not your enemy. The battle says that we are against the higher powers, the principalities of darkness. And I'm telling you, there's no weapon formed against the Elkhorn Baptist Church that will ever prosper. God is for us. Woo! I just wish I had somebody to fight for the fragrance. Fight for the fragrance. You may not want to clap. I'm telling you, you've got to tell your flesh, I'm going to clap today. I'm going to fight for the fragrance. Woo! I feel the Holy Ghost. See, I've walked into many churches before. I have. Uh, let me give you a prime example today. I walked into Elkhorn Baptist Church and I felt the fragrance. I didn't have to do Jesus jump jacks. Watch this. I didn't have to come in here and say, God, I bind the enemy. No. I didn't have to loosen up. I just walked in. Woo. Hey. Something's shifting. Something's happening. Something's going on in the atmosphere. I'm going to fight today to keep the fragrance in the air. Oh, I'm going to. Do, I'm not going to let my neighbor calm me down. I'm not going to calm down. I'm not going to be a good little Baptist pastor. I get red face, red ears, but I'm going to fight for the fragrance. Ooh. Oh, let me go ahead and tell you, I've walked also into churches before. I'm like, what in the world? I felt anger. I said, this is the truth. I walked right into the back before and two people were fighting. Fighting, fussing. And I'm going to be honest with you. I beg God, God, please don't ever let them call me back to do another revival. I didn't feel the fragrance. The fragrance wasn't in the atmosphere. I walked in one way and I left the same way that I walked in. But can I tell y'all something? See, when the fragrance fills the house, souls will be saved. When the fragrance fills the house, you don't have to beg people to come to the altar. When fragrance fills the house, you don't have to beg people to stand up and worship God. When the fragrance fills the house, the altar, the river will be flowing and you'll feel it. You'll know you're in the presence of God. You don't have to pray it up, set it down. Nothing. The fragrance is in the air. Can anybody testify? I'm going to fight for the fragrance. Yeah. See, chains and strongholds, addictions, Heroin addicts who get set free. I've seen it. Don, I look at you, Don and Billy Ray Shark. I remember the Sunday that y'all showed up. What happened to y'all? Can I tell you? You smelt the fragrance. They felt the fragrance. And you may laugh at me. You may say, Brian, you're crazy. I'm telling you, there is a fragrance in Elkhorn Baptist Church that the world is seeing. And I'm telling you, last Friday night at this concert, people were coming up to me. They walked in here and they said, wow! We ain't even got a wow factor no more. We have come accustomed to the fragrance. I'm, I'm all for casting vision. I'm a visionary pastor. I, I'm a Joseph. I stay in the pit a lot. The enemy hates me. He's trying to kill me with my health. He don't want me to be your pastor. Delana, he don't want you on the second row. I remember 2013, First Fruits, 
When God got a hold of you and your prayer was, I want my family to come and see and feel the fragrance of the day. God has answered your prayer. They're on the second row with you and they smell, they feel the fragrance. I'm all for casting vision. I'm all for planning. I'm all for meetings and yearly calendars and budgets. I understand they're going to come, but I'm all for numbers. I love numbers. As a matter of fact, even in the Bible, there's a book of numbers. Hey. But what good is all that? All that. If you walk into this church and you don't feel the fragrance. You don't smell it, you don't feel it. You're having a Judas moment. I've been there, y'all watch me. I have been a Jew, I've had the Judas spirit in my life before. It's horrible, it's horrible. You complain about everything, you talk about everything. I know nobody broke the oil today, but what about the person that you've been complaining about at the altar? Are the preachers too loud? Or the river has got a hundred people in it? What good is a vision if you don't have the fragrance? What good is a crowd if you don't have the fragrance? What good? What good is it if you walk in and all you see is Judas? I'm telling you what God said. One thing worth fighting for, Brian, is the fragrance. And I am begging. I am asking. I am pleading the blood of God over Elkhorn Baptist Church. I don't care how First Baptist worships. I love them. I love them. I love them. But here today, listen to me. I'm praying that you will stand to your feet, run to the river, and fight for the fragrance. I'm not asking us to do something stupid or crazy. Y'all watch me. If you do something stupid or crazy, I'm going to call you out. I want us to be Bible. Where King David danced before the Lord. Where Peter walked on water. Do I have any water walkers out there? Do I have any line killers out there? Do I have any Benayas out there? Where's your fight at? Fragrance is what makes churches better. Y'all realize that? Fragrance is what draws people. Oh, do y'all remember? Listen, here's why one reason why Judas, God just gave us to me, got mad. This is so good. Somebody write this down. I'm going to use a second service too. Because what she had on the inside got experienced on the outside. She had the oil on the inside of the bottle. God, this is good. But George, she said, you know what? God just didn't die for me. God just don't want his church to be in a cage. Sometimes you got to break what you got on the inside. Sometimes God's got to break what's going on on the inside. So everybody on the outside can see and experience the fragrance. Watch this. God just didn't die for you on the inside. He wants the world to experience him on the outside. That's what God wants, what God just said. See, the fragrance is what will break the yoke. I'm telling y'all, when Jesus, when his fragrance breaks in this house today, I'm telling you, it is not man. It is not me. It is not you. I'm telling you, it is the fragrance. It's a fragrance. How? What do you got to do? You got to fight for the fragrance. Everybody say fight for the fragrance. Listen, that word fight, I started thinking about this because a lot of people says, Brian, that's a hard word. Aaron, I want you to put that up here, fight for the fragrance. Fight for the fragrance. Fight for the, I'm going to fight to get into the presence of God. I, I, I'm going to fight for what I believe in. President Trump 
did not believe in Israel, Israel today would still be in 1995, talking about it for 22 years, but President Trump said, I know, and I'm going to fight for Israel, and I'm going to fight, I'm going to stand for them, just the way Jesus is. Listen to me, you've got to fight for the fragrance. That's a hard word, that word fight, that's a tough word. That's why I put it there. <laughs> Watch this already. It's not going to be easy. Did, did y'all expect to get saved and this be easy? Yes, you did. Yes, we do. We're, we're Americans. We, we're spoiled rotten. Lord, you even mentioned the word fight in Camelsville. That's a bad word. Fight. For the fragrance. That's a tough word. Fight. Stand your ground. I'm not backing off. This is who I am. This is who God made me to be. I believe in the Word of God. I believe in Jesus Christ. I believe in the Holy Spirit. I believe in all the Bible. This is what God said, and I'm going to line up to what he said in that Bible. I'm going to fight for the fragrance. Church women, church, can you feel the fragrance? Praise him, want you guys to come. Church, can you feel the fragrance? When was the last time you broke the oil. You broke the inside. Y'all watch me. The oil was on the inside of the bottle. And Drew, it had to be broken and exposed before she could ever worship. But watch this, y'all ready? I'm just telling you. There's always going to be a Judas in the church. Always going to be the spirit of Judas in the church. Where if, listen. <laughs> where the Baptists are staying filled and five souls are getting saved one Sunday. Somebody complained. I'm just telling you. This is truth. This, this word right here, I'm telling you. I wish it would go worldwide. Because I'm telling you, if, if Satan can't kill you from the inside, he's going to try to get you from the outside. Can you feel the fragrance? When was the last time you broke the oil? You broke the inside. You was exposed and then worship filled the atmosphere. What a preach, Drew. You got to fight for the fragrance. So what I'm going to ask you all to do today, y'all ready? I'm going to ask you to break the oil. I'm going to ask you to break the inside. I'm going to ask you to fight for the fragrance. I'm going to ask you. Here's what was going on at church, in the house, and Jesus was there. Y'all ready? A little woman walked in. Watch this. They didn't even want women to be there. What if we lived in a time, Delana, where they said, only men? Mary said, no, no, no. That's my Savior. She walked into the house. And watch this. The church wasn't established at that time. They didn't have a cathedral or a temple or a tabernacle like we got today. They met in houses. They met in basements. They met, they met in living rooms. They met around the kitchen table. That's what they did. And this little lady named Mary, who was an ex-prostitute, by the way. And oh, by the way, let me go ahead and clarify this too for all you theologians. The same perfume that she anointed her feet with, Jesus' feet with, was the same perfume she put on before she went out and prostituted her body. But God is so big. God will turn the negative into a positive. He'll turn the prostitute into somebody who loves God and say, I'm not spending the oil on anything else. I'm going to anoint the feet of God. Woo! See, Judas still remember her past. He still remember. Oh, she's a prostitute. What's she doing? Y'all, I can hear this in churches now. What's who she thinks she is? She's a prostitute. She's using the same oil that she went out on Friday with and now who does she think she is using the oil on Sunday? Why 
Why is she worshiping like that? Why is she fell? Why is she falling on her knees? You better stand up in reverence. Sounds good, don't it? Why is she crying? Why are they crying? Why are they at the river? Why is Beth getting happy dancing for the Lord? Glenn, settle down. You're too loud on the keys. I didn't mean that. Elkhorn, just calm down. Y'all are too, way too loud. Well, I'm definitely out of that one then. Why is she writing that tithe check? Why are you giving a church money? I thought God owned the cattle on a thousand hills and all the gold under it, and you're writing a tithe check? Why are they writing a tithe check for that amount? Did you see the amount of that check? Boy, you know when God's in the house. I'm just asking today, all, me and all of us, praise team, you're included. Are you packing a Judas spirit? Are you ready to fall down and break the oil? And God expose you. And God, I'm going to worship you today. It don't matter if they look at me. It don't matter if I'm crying. God, today I want to break the old. God, I want, if I had long hair, I'd want to take my hair. Y'all think about this. She took her hair and wiped his feet. This is a real story. What if she done it in church today? There would be a Judas. There would be a Judas girl. Always, 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 Judas. If you're mad at me for preaching this sermon, you're probably a Judas. Yeah, I, I, I'm just, either we want church, you want the fragrance, you want Jesus, you want God to bust the oil in your life, and you want to kneel down and worship Him. Oh, you'll always be standing just like this. There they go again. I'm done. I love you. But I'm telling you what I am seeing in the 21st century. Church has become all about us. Church has become all about what we think, how it should be, what, who, who should be there, what, have the style that we worship, if we use the instruments, if we don't use them. I'm just asking, if you didn't have an instrument, could you still worship? I'm just asking you, if we was out in a field with a jacket on, would you worship or would you sit there go, oh my God, what's that stupid pastor thinking now? I hope God, I'm scared to say this, but I'm going to say it. I hope God makes us so uncomfortable we do something about it. I want more, God. Give me more. Okay, here I come. Not just this much. So, chew us up. Chew this sermon up. Chew it up. Chew it up. Chew it up. Digest it. He made a plan. He made a plan to kill Lazarus. He's making a plan this morning to kill you, Greg Ford. Chris, you, you're, you're a wanted man. You're young. You're vibrant. You got a voice that is a standout voice. You're anointed by God. Your ten fingers have been anointed. I remember Bobby Walker anointing every finger on your hand for the purpose of God. It's going to cost you. You be ready. You better be ready to fight. Your salvation, I don't care what any theologians ever told you, it's not, it's not going to be for free. Nope, 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 nope. It's 
not going to be for free. If you're comfortable, it's because you're not doing nothing. I know this is tough. I, I know, I know people, I, I, can, I can feel. I can feel. I'm just telling you, it's up to us now. It is up to us now. Ashley and Brandon, I remember y'all praying over that baby. God gave him to you. That is God's boy. This morning, he was like a ping pong ball. He was up and down through the aisles and running. I am thankful that we got children in this church that are running the aisles. And God is still answering prayers. I feel the fragrance. Carrie, you got a story? I see the fragrance on you. So, Father God, I've done what you called me to do. God, I am spiritually wore out right now. But, God, I know you gave me this word. And, God, I'm willing to fight for you. I'm willing to fight for the fragrance. I'm willing to fight till the oil is broken in my life. I'm willing to run and jump in the river and let the river take me wherever you want to take me. I've got to fight for the river. I've got to fight for what I believe in. I've got to fight for Jesus. I've got to fight for the fragrance. So God, right now, have your way. Bless these beautiful people. God, fill this room with the fragrance. Right now, God, right now, right now. Break the oil and fill this house with your fragrance. In Jesus' name. Amen. This altar's open. This river's open. You're going to have to fight to get here. Because some of you don't want to get here. Some of you are sitting in your chairs. You know God's calling you. You know that God's got a word for you. And listen, listen, you're sitting there. You know God. But God is calling more. I'm telling you, more. So you're going to have to fight to get here today. Because watch, the enemy says stay where you're at stay Delana stay where you're at you're good you're a good mom you're a good wife stay where you're at teenagers what stay right there don't you move don't don't come here that's what Satan says George you're gonna have to fight for your life the enemy hates you and is trying to kill you do you understand me George Bethy hates you and if he can't kill you from the inside, he's going to try to kill you from the outside. Church, I have preached my heart out. And now, you're going to have to fight for the fragrance. In Jesus' name, let's go. Fight for the fragrance.